Hey everyone, you're here with Mark Batwa of PerfectGardens.com. So, Michael Allen had a great question today. Can you make your own beneficial bacteria for hydroponics? In addition, he was wondering what is the best way to add non-sulfurous molasses to your plants while running a hydroponic system. So in this video, we're going to get into it. Are you tired of getting in crappy advice from your local hydroponics store or having to search all over forums to get advice that only takes you in different directions than solving your immediate problem? Well, join our membership for $50 a month. You get direct access to me. We'll connect on WhatsApp app. And just like this gentleman that started back in July with us, as problems arise, we are here for you. So in our past videos, I've talked a lot about beneficial bacteria, and I've broken down products like Recharge. I don't know if I've broken down uh, this Extreme Guarding. But basically, this is how you build up your beneficial bacteria and funguses. And what you actually want to do is you want to create a tea, and that's what they normally call it. Is It's basically where you have your nematodes and your beneficial bacteria and funguses, and they're brewing over a course of a few days and there's a lot of science behind this but in that process of you making your tea is when you're going to add molasses or something along those lines because at the end of the day you you just don't want to put take molasses and throw it in the water because i mean think about it right when you're using it it's kind of thick it doesn't really mix well uh, in colder water and just like if you're i mean think about it if you're cooking or something you you normally put the molasses in a slightly warm water and allow it to dilute over a little bit of time by agitating the water will you do those same things if you're just trying to add molasses straight into the reservoir so most likely you won't and the molasses will end up gunking up things and, and cause, maybe causing just some type of bad bacterial growth from starting so the best way to do it is by using it in a beneficial tea and then allowing that tea to brew over a course of a couple of days and then adding that tea into your hydroponic system. By doing that, that's going to be the best way to add the molasses or whatever into your hydroponic system. Let's go back to the tea. Every single time you look at these products, you turn the bottle behind and you look at what's in, in, inside of it. And as you can see right here, they have four glomuses, they have four bacteria, and I believe these are also bacteria. So this is their combination. If you look at subculture M and B, you can see that they have four bacteria, and let's, let's compare them. So they have the pumas, the pumas, the L, this one, I can't say it, the M, the M, and the septus. So, okay, so they have these two on the bacteria, which is very interesting right there. And when you look at the glomuses right here, it looks like they have all the same glomuses as well. So there's a different way of measuring right here, and I'd have to look that up a little bit better. But it, it looks potentially like are close to being very similar. As you can see right here, you have the humic acid, the humic acid, the kelp, the kelp, you have molasses. And it, it looks like what Recharge is doing is they're putting all the product in one bottle versus subculture M and B is they're separating out into two separate bottles and selling you two separate products. So again, more marketing, more opportunity to create more bottles, which gives you the opportunity to purchase them separately. And but I do see some value in this too, is because, well, I really don't actually. The point to this is that you're going to grab products like this which will be the foundation you're for brewing your tea. It's a very easy way to brew your tea, hyperoxygenated. I always recommend cleaning your water with Drops of Balance. It, the Drops of Balance is an ionic sulfate and mineral product. I go into depth about it a lot. So you, like you were asking over here, how, can you make your own tea? Yes. How do you make your tea and the fundamentals of it? Well, you got to understand how the plant, the main components of the plants work. So I love referencing Drops of Balance brochure that they send out on every order because it just has so much information. But let's go ahead over here and just take a look at what they did to describe how this works. And if you understand the basics of the, these foundations, you'll be able to produce your own tea. Obviously, there's ways of making things better. And I'm going to, at the end of the video, recommend Elaine Ingram because she really gets into depth. Uh, they're talking about the beneficial nematodes and the protozoa and 
and she goes so into depth about everything a good tea actually needs for your system and a whole biological living system that when you start to go down her direction, you'll realize how weak what I'm right about to describe to you actually is because of how many other living organisms are missing within the ecosystem. But although these few things will get you started and you'll be able to see a drastic difference. So right here, the plants release hormones and it, through those hormones, it goes and tells the fungi to reti retrieve specific minerals. But minerals are not really 100% available yet because they have to go through cation exchanges. And I don't want to go too much into depth through that, but that cation exchange, a lot of it gets set up and makes these minerals bioavailable because of the bacteria. The bacteria make the minerals bioavailable. And without those bacteria, fertilizer companies have to rely on chelating agents and pH adjustments and tweaking of the environment to make minerals water soluble and to permeate the root system. But how this works is the bacteria produce coenzymes that make the minerals bioavailable. After that, the fungi are capable of retrieving these bioavailable minerals because the bacteria are producing the coenzymes to make them, once again, available. And the fungi are bringing them back into the system. So what do you basically need to create your own tea? You need a full set of trace minerals, not just the macro minerals. So you just don't want to dump NPK into your brew tea system. But what you want to do is you want to build up your trace mineral system. And because your trace minerals is like the buffet, right? But the bacteria is, let me rephrase. The minerals is like the ingredients in your cabinet for cooking, but the bacteria is what brings it all together in a meal. And if you only have a few ingredients, the meal might end up being bland. Like if you can imagine eating a piece of meat that doesn't have any flavoring, any you don't have salt, pepper, no ketchup, no barbecue sauce, you're, you're literally just eating meat. So the key first off is actually to have start with good, clean, mineralized water. That drops of balance will make that all happen almost immediately by adding drops of balance into tap water. It actually breaks apart all the man-made chemicals that makes bacteria and fungi dormant, really, and makes things just not really work properly in your soil system. So it, it, it rips apart all made, made bonds and it reassembles into sulfate of minerals. You end up having a huge array of minerals of 50 to 60 plus trace minerals. It's kind of interesting when you get into the depth of uh, how it works because every single time you fractionate the water, depending upon what chemicals are in there, it actually creates more minor or more trace minerals, smaller and smaller trace minerals. So if your water is really dirty, and you're using drops balance, it, you might end up creating 80 trace minerals, which is really interesting. And so when you have all these trace minerals, depending upon how many bacteria are in your system, it will produce coenzymes for each of these bacteria. So when you think about it, though, over here and you look at recharge, there's four bacteria, right? But in reality, if you Google it, so all I typed in was how many different types of bacteria are in your soil system. And right here it tells you a teaspoon of productive soil generally contains between 100 million and a billion bacteria. That is huge when you really think about that. Okay. So these products only have four different bacteria, but they do have a large uh, spore count. When you add in all these different 80 plus trace minerals, it ends up really building in a huge coenzyme base. The next step is also adding in some beneficial bacteria and fungi because once again, even in just a teaspoon of bacteria, once you get these brew system going, it's going to keep repopulating that bacterial count up to a certain amount of time. That's why you only want your teas to brew between 24 to 72 hours is because that bacterial count, if it's not staying oxidated and agitated, it might go sour on you in a sense. But by adding in the minerals, the bacteria, now you have fungi and you have molasses, which is sugars. There's a lot of controversy on whether you should add molasses or not. You end up starting to build a biological system. These four components are the cornerstone to building a beneficial bacteria and fungus foundation in your growth system. Once again, I highly recommend to go to YouTube, check out Elaine Ingram. She's going to go into so much more depth 
you're going to see my level of ignorance when you compare it to uh, Elaine Ingram and what she knows. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful on understanding that, yes, you can build, uh, build your own beneficial bacteria and fungi, and the best way to do it is by having a brewing system. Thank you so much, and have a great grow. Please like, share, and subscribe.